Thanks for taking the time to watch Yukon Shop Tips. Today we're going to be talking about how to identify the differential that you're working on. Besides the year, make, and model, and vehicle information that you want to have handy, there's also a few key visual factors that we look for when it comes to trying to identify a differential for you. One of the more important factors that we look for in identifying a differential is the cover bolt count. You need to know how many bolts are on that cover because most differentials have their own unique set of bolt counts. So in some cases you'll have a 10 bolt like this one, or you could have a 12 bolt or a 14 bolt, but that is going to aid in us identifying that differential for you. An important aspect of identifying your differential is letting us know whether or not you've got an integrated housing like this GM 10 bolt here with an inspection cover, or a dropout style differential where the whole differential drops out from the front half of the housing and there is no inspection cover. Knowing this can be very important to determining which application you've got. Another method that we use to identify your differential is to figure out what type of axle shaft that you have, whether it's a semi-float or a full float, and if it's a semi-float, whether it's a C-clip or a bolt-in application. A C-clip axle actually uses a C-shaped clip that fits into a little slot on the end of the axle shaft. This is a semi-float axle where the bearing rides directly on the bearing journal. The bolt-in style axle is also a semi-floater, but it bolts into the housing. The bearing is pressed onto the shaft and there's a retaining flange that bolts the entire assembly to the differential. On a full float axle, this axle bolts directly to the hub and the bearings are contained inside of that hub. They don't touch the axle at all, making it full float. When it comes to measuring these axles, there's two different methods. The semi-float axle measures from the outside face of the flange where your drum or your rotor sits, all the way down to the physical end of the axle shaft, including the C-clip button. On the bolt-in axle, it's the same way. However, for the full float, you're only measuring the shaft length itself. So the inside edge of the flange down to the end of the axle shaft is your total length. These are very helpful ways that we use to identify what type of differential you're working with. When you're done measuring your axles and determining whether you have the full float or semi-float, make sure you take note of your spline count because that can vary from application to application as well. Take a look at the end of the axle shaft and actually look at the raised portion of the teeth and count those down. It can be anywhere from 27 to 30 to 32 to 35, so it's really important that we get that accurate number to help you figure out which differential you have. Another helpful aspect of identifying your axle is figuring out how many bolts you have, your bolt pattern, and the hub diameter. In some cases, bolts are really easy. You have six, you have five, that's simple. Determining the bolt pattern can be a little bit more complicated. The best way to do that is to measure from the center of one stud to the center of the axle flange itself and double that number. In this case, we have a six on five and a half bolt pattern. The hub diameter is measured where the hub actually pilots where the brake drum or the rotor sits. Having this number can give us the difference between certain years and different variations. These are also great tools to help identify your differential. So once you have your axle disassembled and you have all the parts taken out, you can measure your ring gear to get the diameter of it. From the widest point on this ring gear, you're going to go from tooth tip to tooth tip to get its true diameter. A couple other things that we can use to identify the differential is figuring out what size pinion nut you have. And it's really simple. Just grab a socket, figure out what the diameter is, whichever one fits the best, get that number and let us know because we can tell the difference between a Dana 80 or a GM 8.2 simply by the size of the pinion nut. Also, look to see if you have a pinion support. Some differentials, like a 9-inch forward or a 14-bolt full-floating 10.5-inch GM differential, it's a lot to say, they have these cool things up front. They actually unbolt from the housing and the whole pinion assembly comes out through the front half. It's very clear what differential you have if we know that you've got one of these. Thanks again for taking the time to watch this Yukon Shop Tip on how to identify your differential. If you have any questions on this subject or any other tech questions, please give us a call at 1-800-330-2206.